Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India we looked at research reports. Today, we will look at another important aspect of academic life that is research paper also known as technical paper sometimes. So, before we move to research paper, let us first have a very quick look at dissertations and then we will move to research paper. So, dissertations you know um, are part of undergraduate programs, postgraduate programs and definitely for a doctoral degree you need to submit a dissertation. A dissertation as you can see has the following components, a title page, acknowledgement, abstract table of contents then introduction, review of research, current research study, the methodology, data analysis, results and discussion, conclusion, references and appendices. Of course, depending on the nature of your field of study and your subject, there may be slight variation in this structure. However, the general structure more or the less remains the same. So, let us very quickly look at each of these and then see how you know um, we go about a dissertation. So, first is a title page. So, you mention your, so as we have seen in the case of research reports, research proposal, title has to be short, it should clearly capture the essence of your study. Then acknowledgement here you thank all the people who have directly and indirectly helped you. So, this is very important. Then abstract, this is um, as we have seen in the case of uh, research report, this is actually a summary of your uh, complete uh, dissertation. So, sections um, of your dissertation are aptly you know uh, represented in a good abstract. Then you have table of contents. Uh, note here that a dissertation is expected to be fairly uh, long, something like at least 250 pages, 250 pages having many chapters, subsections and so on. So, you need to have a table of contents indicating all these chapters, sections, subsections and the page numbers. And then you move into what we call uh, the main body. So, which includes introduction, review, methodology, data analysis, results and conclusion. So, introduction section, here you introduced, introduce the field of study, you uh, define key concepts if any you, you think are necessary and um, also you very briefly summarize your methodology and findings. It is a kind of you know making your readers ready, making them you know uh, develop interest in what you are going to talk about. Also introduction section usually gives um, you know some information about how the rest of the dissertation is structured, something like what you are going to do in chapter 1 and then chapter 2 and so on. Then there is review of research. Here you look at uh, uh, main studies conducted in your uh, you know, research area. Uh, you are expected to review um, major works as we have seen in the case of uh, you know a research proposal or a research report uh, that is expected of you. And, um, you identify a gap on the basis of this review. Then 
you talk about methodology. So, what your research questions are, what hypothesis you are going to test, then uh, subjects of your study, tools you are going to use, how you are planning to collect data, how you are planning to go about data analysis, all these things will go into um, methodology. Then data analysis here you present detailed analysis of data you have collected. So, you include descriptive statistics as well as inferential statistics. So, what are these? We will look at them when we are discussing research paper. Then you come to results and discussion. So, you discuss what the data means here and um, you know you refer back to your research questions, answer them, then you clearly say whether your hypothesis has been proved or it has not been, then what are the possible re reasons. So, all these things you mention here. Conclusion, you sum up your uh, study again um, and um, focusing on main findings. You also here include limitations of your study, what you could not do or um, what you thought would not be an influencing factor, but later on you realized it would be an influential factor. And so, you say that uh, future studies have to take care of it. So, thereby you also give some ideas about future research in this conclusion section. Then references you list all uh, books, uh, book chapters, journal articles, website, everything you have referred to here. Then appendices, uh, these are optional. Sometimes you include tools of your uh, data collection here under appendices. So, this is a broad structure of a dissertation. So, you do study and you report it. One uh, aspect which you know I would like to focus more on is you know the use of footnotes or end notes. So, these are you know notes that provide sometimes bibliographic reference depending on um, the referencing style you are uh, using um, or some supplementary informations, opinions, explanations or suggestions which are not part of the main body of the text. So, so, for example, you are talking about an issue and uh, there is some extra information, but you feel that should not go into the main body of the uh, text. So, then you can use footnotes or end notes. Um, however, note that uh, in some cases uh, it is very clearly said that you cannot use footnotes and end notes, particularly some journals they have this restriction. Okay. So, now we come to a research paper. So, this is you know in some way similar to our dissertation. Structure as we have observed is more or the less similar. If this is also you know about the study you have conducted, then what is the difference? So, usually people say that you can get many research papers out of a good dissertation. So, how does it work? So, a dissertation you know is actually as I mentioned is a fairly long document about 150 to 100 pages sometimes even more than that. However, a research paper has a strict world limit most of the times it is about 2000 words to 5000 words. So, one aspect which is you know which makes research paper different is research paper is a highly condensed version. So, um, if you recall these are the sections you know um, components of a dissertation uh, they are there in a research paper as well, but on a miniature scale. So, you have to be very judicious about what to include. So, for example, introduction you may you know define lot of terms, uh, introduce field you know 
uh, give lot of information in a dissertation. But in a research paper, you are required to include only what you think is absolutely necessary. So, uh, dissertation is written for you know keeping an average person in mind, but a research paper is targeted at specific audience, people you know who are doing research in your specific field of study. So, some kind of basic knowledge is taken for granted. So, therefore, you are not required to go into too much of information, too many details, but in a dissertation you include all the details. So, you go very slow about exp the topic explaining it uh, in a very elaborate manner, but in a research paper you do not do that, you skip the obvious and you straight away come to what the point you are trying to make. Uh, and another important thing as I mentioned, a research paper has word limit and second it is intended for a specific audience. So, they know already the basic things. So, you cannot waste your um, energy space on uh, dealing with something very general. So, you have to come to very specific things. So, a research paper you know could be about an empirical study, it could be qualitative or quantitative. So, you, you know have a we discussed this earlier as well. So, you have a control group, an experimental group, so that would be kind of you know uh, uh, empirical study and you collect um, quantitative data, you use quantitative analysis or you know you can collect qualitative data like you interview people, you observe and you give a descriptive account of uh, your subject. So, that is a qualitative analysis. Uh, apart from it, there is also something called state of the art uh, review. So, in uh, this kind of research paper, you are not presenting findings from your study which you know is new which you think is going to add to your uh, field of study. In a state of the art review, you look at say the past 5 years, 10 years, all the major uh, studies you review it and you sort of you know um, highlight major trends changes in your area of study. So, this is called uh, state of the art review. So, these things are useful for uh, people who want to conduct research in the future. So, they can get to know what has been happening in the field. So, where is the gap and um, so what next needs to be done. Then there, there are also something called theoretical papers. Here you advance a theoretical framework. Uh, so, obviously, it does not involve any data analysis or any you know kind of uh, control group, experimental group kind of uh, settings. So, um, say for example, you are uh, proposing a new methodology to teach English. So, you go into theoretical aspects, you propose your framework, you leave it to other researchers to try it out and comment on it efficacy. So, I mentioned that um, a research paper is a highly condensed version of a dissertation. So, uh, what it means? So, if you look at it, uh, it has very brief introduction to the field I mentioned. It has very brief review of previous research, only the most important path breaking or those which are directly related to what you are going to talk about, they are reviewed. Then you identify gap, then you focus more on your study. So, you give details about methodology, procedure, data analysis, all these things. However, say you are say replicating a study with different 
conditions. Then you just refer to the original study and you briefly mention what new things you are going to add. You will not give uh, too many details about the original study. Then appendices, of course, you include uh, tools you use for your uh, research. Okay. So, um, uh, let us look at you know components of research paper in detail and let us also look at uh, some examples to understand these. So, we have observed components of a, dis a dissertation um, and we mentioned that in some ways a research paper uh, you know mirrors it, but in some aspects is different. So, we will look at those similarities and differences here. So, here um, for a research paper as I mentioned audience is the scientific community. So, very specific focus. So, again maybe within physics there are many areas. Um, so, sub areas. So, a journal you know may be um, concerned only about only one specific uh, uh, part of a uh, big field of study. So, uh, this is uh, important. Uh, you make a statement or claim uh, you know, that you have proved something. Uh, there are many conferences held. So, you send a paper for a conference as well and many times they you know, specify that uh, your paper has to be written according to some specific style uh, just as the same way you submit it to a journal. So, um, what are the specific things you key, need to keep in mind? According to Green Law and Green Law 2012, uh, uh, the research that the authors intend to present in a research paper, it has to be complete and accurately documented. You cannot miss out on any crucial detail like how many people know you started with for example, then some people dropped out. So, finally, how many people did you work with? So, all these details you need to uh, document very uh, carefully. Then the article should be well organized and must demonstrate interesting ideas or conclusions to the reader. So, the first part is um, uh, organization. So, most journals, they specify how a paper needs to be structured including formatting guidelines. So, you need to strictly adhere to them and then another important thing is this interesting ideas or conclusions. So, it is assumed that you are going to say something new in your research paper. So, you cannot be merely reiterating what is known, what is already, what has already been established. So, that cannot be uh, your research paper. So, that is you know a difference between a textbook and a research paper. So, if you are writing a textbook say for a group of students, so there you know you gather all the resources you consult uh, several articles, books, you know, in your uh, area of interest and you explain concepts in a simple way. There, you know, the purpose is different. Here in a research paper, it is assumed that you have something new and you are going to present it. Then, no erroneous or false information can appear in the text. So, the, the, it is assumed that you know whatever you present is accurate, you have been truthful, you have been honest. Okay. So, coming to components, uh, just like a dissertation, you, we can divide uh, the components into three parts. So, opening section, main body and then the uh, other sections. So, uh, the opening section has the following a title, you know list of authors names and affiliations, then abstract and keywords. Main body has introduction, 
background research, background information, previous research, then methodology and implementation, results and discussion, conclusion. Then you have acknowledgments, references, appendices and short bio of the author or the authors. So, first one is title. So, um, title needless to say you know attracts the attention of your readers and it has to capture the true essence of your article. So, um, in certain cases as I have mentioned here, so where a conference is trying to you know offer papers covering a broad range of topics, the initial selection may be made based largely on the title. So, if your title indicates that this is something new, this is interesting, then it is more likely to get uh, shortlisted. Then um, it should represent the contents of the paper, at the same time it should be original and interesting. Um, it should have easily understandable uh, jargon. So, we mentioned this is for specific audience you take some things for granted, but title you cannot you know pack with uh, too many jargon um, and too many technical words. Then it should not be too long, this again many journals actually specify word limit something like 15 to 20 words for a title. So, it should not be um, longer than that. Second part is you know information about authors and affiliations. So, uh, what does this include? In a dissertation you are the sole author and you include um, details of your supervisor, your doctoral advisor, but a research paper may have many authors. So, you need to include um, the names and the institutes, universities, organizations they belong to um, in this section. So, sometimes uh, you know um, footnotes or you know superscripts are used uh, depending on the conventions for, uh, followed by that specific um, journal. So, um, an author's affiliation usually includes the name of the author, um, the institute, the organization, uh, details of course, very briefly and um, the email ID. So, I mentioned sometimes research papers may have multiple authors. So, listing those names is actually very important. Why? It is because of this thing. In some uh, areas, the way you list you know authors indicates the extent of each of their contributions. Say for example, you have three people listed as authors, let us say x, y, z and you list them in the same order x, y and z. So, it is assumed that the person x's contribution was the greatest followed by that of y and z. So, x is referred to as the first author, y as the second author, z as the third author and so on. So, the person who has contributed the most that person's name comes first. So, this is very important. Sometimes what happens they say there is a joint paper by a student and the student supervisor. So, um, the supervisor sometimes you know put the student's name as the first author uh, to encourage the student's uh, career advancement. However, in some uh, fields um, this convention may not be applicable. So, in such cases the names of authors are listed just you know 
alphabetically. So, here it does not mean that the person whose name has been listed uh, has contributed the most. But in most areas, the convention is that the first person you mention is the first author has uh, you know contributed the greatest and therefore also gets the highest credit. So, this is applicable you know when uh, you know um, in times of career advancement, promotions, recruitment. So, these things it becomes very important. So, if you have collaborated with somebody, um, you should be very clear about how you are going to list the names and who is going to take how much of credit. So, this is very important. Now, let us look at uh, an example. So, uh, this is from uh, Green Law and Green Law 2012. So, this example if you uh, you know look at it has title of the article, a formal verification of an airplane chassis control system. Then uh, uh, names of authors are listed. There are three authors here. Then you see you know superscript. So, what it means? It gives details about the institute affiliations. So, one here corresponds to this. So, this person William Henderson is from Department of Computer Science, University of the South and the details. Then it also gives the mail ID. Then uh, the other two Scott Green, Jason Smith both have the same superscript number. It means both of them are from the same institute. They are from Department of Engineering Studies, Rojo's Institute of Cybernetics and then the details. Then there is also a uh, mail ID. So, sometimes when there is more than one author, some journals clearly ask you to indicate who the corresponding author is. So, you again you know put a superscript and you indicate that this person is the you know author for all correspondences. Maybe the you know the editors sometimes write back to them or if people have any queries after reading the article, they write back. So, who should they write to? So, that is what we mean by corresponding author. The next important component is abstract. So, as we have seen earlier, abstract is you know um, a summary of your uh, complete text. So, you have it in research reports, you have it in your research proposal, you also have in dissertations um, and you have it in research papers as well. But in a research paper, the length of abstract is usually very short. Here again, many times word limit is given to you. So, something like 200 words, 150 to 200 words, that is the kind of you know uh, limit um, you need to work with. So, an abstract here, it includes all the important information about your research paper. People who do not have time to read the detailed one or even before deciding whether they should read your paper or not, they consult abstract. So, if you open a website of any journal, they list abstract first. So, you read abstract and then you decide whether this article is worth reading or not. So, abstract has to be very carefully planned. So, just as abstract in other context, so abstract you know includes some information about you know introduction to your field and then something about um, your research question, some information about your methodology, then primary findings, um, all these sections are represented in the abstract. But it does not mean you just take sentences from there and put it in an abstract. So, you need to paraphrase, you need to word them very carefully. 
So, um, some people find it um, uh, you know uh, easier to write the abstract once the complete paper is ready. Uh, sometimes you know you might want to first write uh, at least a very uh, draft version of abstract. So, that may help you guide in structuring the different parts of the paper. So, uh, abstract you know has to be very carefully thought out and written. Um, some more important points which you need to keep in mind. So, this needs to be very clear and concise and this is an advertisement for an oral presentation of the paper say in a conference. So, they bring out book of abstracts. So, if your abstract is appealing people will attend your presentation. So, in this context your abstract serves as an advertisement. We will now look at an example. So, this uh, is an abstract for a paper uh, titled running on empty the effects of food deprivation on concentration and perseverance. So, this is uh, from this source. So, uh, keep in mind the title. So, running on empty the effects of food deprivation on concentration and perseverance. So, now let us look at the abstract. This study examined the effects of short term food deprivation on two cognitive abilities concentration and perseverance. Undergraduate students number 51 were tested on both a concentration task and a perseverance task after one of three levels of food deprivation none 12 hours or 24 hours. We predicted that food deprivation would impair both concentration scores and perseverance time. Food deprivation had no significant effect on concentration scores which is consistent with recent research on the effects of food deprivation. Green et al 1995, Green et al 1997. However, participants in the 12 hour deprivation group spent significantly less time on the perseverance task than those in both the control and 24 hour deprivation groups suggesting that short term deprivation may affect some aspects of cognition and not others. So, let us analyze this. So, what was the aim of this? This is clearly stated in the first line. So, the effects of short term food deprivation on two cognitive abilities concentration and perseverance. So, this was you know the independent variable short term food deprivation. Uh, these are dependent variables cognitive abilities. So, this is the uh, main research question research aim. Then who are the subjects? You see the details here undergraduate students and how many 51. There is some detail about methodology here. So, they were tested on two tasks a concentration task and a perseverance task. Then there were three conditions. So, none means no food deprivation then 12 hours food deprivation for 12 hours and then food deprivation for 24 hours. So, what was uh, the hypothesis food deprivation would impair both concentration scores and perseverance time. So, this was hypothesis, but what happened? The results the main results are given here. So, food deprivation had no significant effect on so no significant effect on concentration scores but participants in 12 hour deprivation group spend significantly less time on the perseverance task. So, hypothesis was partly confirmed partly rejected. Then uh, the main implications of the study is given here. 
short term deprivation may affect some aspects of cognition and not others. So, you can see that introduction, uh, there is some information about previous research here, then the uh, area, the research methodology, uh, details and then uh, main findings. So, and then, then the uh, main contribution of the current study. So, this is very crucial. So, uh, that is how you write an abstract you know a good one which captures um, all the elements of your research paper and makes your readers interested in your research. The next component is keywords. So, this is very closely linked with your title and your abstract. So, some journals you know require you to uh, supply 3 to 5 uh, keywords along with your research article. Why? So, um, you know uh, most of these journals are actually you know available online and you know they are uh, codified using these keywords. So, if you are searching, you are a person interested in this particular area. So, you key in those words and the results will appear. So, this will help in you know in online cataloging and online search. So, um, listing keywords is actually very important. Also, uh, for a general reader when you look at these keywords then it clearly gives an indication whether ok this is the article which I am interested in this is you know related to the field I am working on or this is not related to the field. So, uh, keywords are very important. So, how do you list keywords? Uh, it is you know um, uh, it is a fairly simple uh, process. You have already thought of a title for your uh, research paper. It means you know all the you know contents of it, you know what things to focus on. So, you have got those keywords and you have put them in your title. So, you can use your title and then you can also look at your abstract. So, what things are highlighted in your abstract say what area of study, uh, specific group of you know subjects, specific uh, tools you have used, you know specific uh, ways of analyzing data. So, these become your keywords. So, let us look at this. Uh, you know the keywords are a list of individual words or sometimes even short phrases describing the research areas. So, they help potential readers identify the primary subjects of your article and as I mentioned they advertise your paper as well. They are also used for electronic indexing, indexing and categorization of research works. So, how you list these keywords? Uh, there are two ways to go about it. Sometimes you just list them alphabetically, but the most common con convention is to list them according to their relative importance. So, which one you know, uh, say you have uh, identified 5 keywords. So, you list the word which you think you know is very important which you have focused uh, most in your study as the first one followed by words which you think are of um, uh, less importance uh, uh, you know in that uh, order. So, now let us look at an example. So, um, we saw this um, abstract running on empty the effects of food deprivation on concentration on perseverance. So, just using the title the following could be your keywords food deprivation, concentration, perseverance. So, these in a way clearly tell you that this study is you know about food preservation and how it um, deprivation and how it affects concentration and perseverance. 
So, here the main thing is food deprivation then followed by concentration and perseverance. So, this is listed according to uh, the relative importance as pursued by you as the author of this particular paper. Okay. So, the next um, now we move to the main body of the research paper. So, it has introduction, uh, preview, uh, previous research, then uh, research methodology, results and discussion and conclusion section. So, let us first look at introduction. So, this you know captures audience attention early on and you know it uh, should help them uh, stay focused, it should make them get interest, develop interest in your paper. Um, you know it sets the general context and tone of the work. So, what your study is about, why you want to focus on it, that kind of uh, information. Then um, you include a brief discussion of uh, previous results, very uh, important ones. So, just to say that why you, uh, you know did this particular research. So, you do not give details here. Then information about research methodology and main finding this again you know very briefly you will say that um, this was the gap um, and therefore, to investigate it this kind of tool was used and this was the finding. So, here again you know you do not give too many details, you just give um, uh, you know only the main points. The idea is you, you know develop interest among your readers. Uh, uh, another important thing is you also outline the reminder of the paper. So, just as you would do in a dissertation, so in dissertations you have chapters. In a research paper, you have sections and subsections. So, you say something like um, section 1 focuses on uh, the review of previous research, section 2 gives details about research methodology, uh, followed by section 3 where um, main findings are presented and section 4 finally, uh, summarizes the research and uh, uh, gives indication for future research. So, uh, you you know outline the structure of the rest of the paper. So, let us look at an example here. This is from the article Propositions, Meaning and Method by Seth Len Stomberg, ELT journal. So, uh, here in this paper article in this article uh, the writer is arguing for a new methodology uh, to teach prepositions. So, let us look at the introduction section. The approach taken in this article is subsumed within Lekhoff's application of prototype theory to linguistics as formulated most prominently by for example, Roche 1978. A key contention about prepositions is that each one is likely to have a relatively small number of related literal meanings among which the tendency is for one to be psychologically prototypical that is to be a best example in the same way that for many people a robin would be the best example of a bird. An additional contention is that some of the literal meanings of a preposition especially its prototypical meaning are extended by metaphor to create another relatively small set of related meanings. So, as you can see here first the art the author places the current study in the broad framework. So, that is Lakoff study and uh, Roche 1978 and then straight away comes to uh, you know what this current study is about. So, there are two important things which are proposed in this um, study. So, this is one. Um, so, that you know this is a kind of um, prepositional meaning is sort of you know 
uh, prototypical and that uh, there are uh, you know extensions of these uh, meanings. So, in the introduction section itself you know you indicate your area note here in a dissertation you will give uh, more details about say for example, uh, this theory Lakoff's theory or Roche 1978, but in a research paper you just refer to it because you assume uh, these uh, theories are known to readers and even if they do not know because you have cited you expect your readers to consult some other sources to get more information, but here you come straight to your study because you know uh, space is very important in a journal. Next section is review of literature. So, here you review your previous works in, in that particular field of study. Again you you know uh, review only um, the most important, the most relevant or uh, the most recent ones. Um, unlike a dissertation, you will not go into you know a long history, you will not mention too many studies. Sometimes you may also just review you know um, previous methodologies followed. So, if you are focus is on you know criticizing the old one, proposing something new, similarly you can you know um, critique. Um, existing frameworks, theoretical frameworks if you are proposing something new. So, uh, depending on uh, your main uh, aim uh, what you focus on you know in your review actually changes. So, now going back to that same um, article prepositions meaning and method. So, we saw that our uh, you know uh, the author here is proposing a new framework to teach prepositions. First you know the uh, idea argument is you know present a new view about uh, prepositional meaning and then uh, say that accordingly uh, the, the way they are taught also should be changed. So, keep that in mind. Now, let us look at uh, the review section from this article. Considering their prominent role in the semantics of English prepositions remarkably you know uh, little space is devoted to prepositions or directional adverbs for example, forward in ELT course books produced in the UK or the USA. Because I am interested only in the meaning I will use the term preposition to describe both parts of speech without wishing to suggest that they behave the same syntactically. Reference grammars practice grammars and supplementary books of the phrasal verbs made easy sort frequently have small sections on prepositions, sometimes accompanied by simple pictures or diagrams. Of the 20 or so such books I have looked at recently, none attempts to present more than one or a very small set of meanings for any one preposition. So, you can see here. Uh, the writer talks about how uh, prepositions are dealt with in the course books. So, this is here very little space is devoted to prepositions or directional adverbs in ELT course books produced in the UK or the US. So, even the context of review is you know highly specified. So, uh, you get a clear indication that the author is going to look at some course books. English language teaching course books produced in the UK or the USA and focus is what she calls prepositions or directional adverbs. Um, you can see here there is that some information is here uh, in you know given here in brackets. In some cases you know this kind of information will be given as a footnote or an end note. So, we discussed you know you have some information some um, clarification you feel you need to provide here the writer you know um, gives a clarification 
that she is not going to distinguish between preposition and directional adverb, she is going to treat them as same. Uh, so, there is more clarification. So, this kind of you know clarification because of the uh, requirements of the journal has been given as part of the main text, but separated using brackets you can also use as I said a footnote or an end note. Continuing, however, a dictionary Sinclair 1987 goes to the other extreme. An entry for on for example, has 19 subsections with no attempt to explicitly highlight semantic relations between any of the various uses that are covered. The assumption both of ELT grammarians and lexicographers seems to be that the semantics of prepositions are too complex and systematic to warrant thorough investigation either in or out of the uh, classroom. Rather, prepositions are largely to be learnt narrow context by narrow context, often phrase by phrase. No doubt, there is some unavoidable rote learning to be done. I believe, however, that the collocational approach greatly underestimates the extent to which prepositional semantics is systematic. It thus leaves the student with far too much item by item learning to do. So, here you saw that the writer mentions 20 or so such books I have looked at recently, none attempts to present a you know systematic account of even a single proposition. So, the details are not given here. If readers are interested, they can uh, go back and uh, uh, consult these sources. Um, the writer here focuses on one particular uh, book, addiction, the, it is cited Sinclair 1987. So, the specific uh, issues are here given because a writer is clearly contesting this. So, this is here that the collocational approach greatly underestimates that is systematic. So, the writer is um, clearly not happy with this uh, approach which is prevalent in the previous works and is going to propose something different. So, this is how you know you do a review in your research paper. So, as I mentioned in a dissertation uh, you will probably uh, you know if you were doing it you will list all these 20 or box you know you give information you analyze uh, you know each of uh, those using a particular framework. So, there will be a lot of details, but in a research paper it is um, highly succinct you include only what is important to make your point. So, author's point is the previous approaches um, uh, encourage a lot of rote learning and they do not seem to recognize that uh, prepositional meaning is um, to some extent systematic. So, so only what is needed to make this point uh, only those things are mentioned in this review of uh, research. Moving on the next section is methodology. So, this section you know is very important for experts. They look at methodology and then they decide whether your study is trustworthy or not, whether you followed conventions, uh, whether your tools were you know in line with what has been you know used in the previous works. So, have you you know clearly controlled extraneous variables? So, all these uh, questions are very uh, crucial because these things clearly affect the outcomes. So, if your methodology has flaws then your outcomes you know um, we cannot trust. So, therefore, this section is very important. Also you know the, this section you know you include all the details because if um, somebody else wants to replicate your study they should be able to do so. So, you clearly mention you know who your subjects were, what tools you used, how you used those tools, what kind of data you 
collected and um, what you did with that data. So, every minute aspect you include under research methodology. So, uh, this helps others replicate your research. Say for example, you worked with a group of uh, 20 students from urban areas. You know, you taught them English using uh, stories and after 2 months, there were significant improvements. So, if somebody wants to replicate, you know, they may uh, you know, uh, use a group of students from rural areas. So, uh, these kinds of you know replication studies are possible if you uh, uh, you know give uh, uh, specific details about your methodology. So, uh, this includes your hypothesis, research questions, then information about participants, tools, procedure and uh, data collection. So, uh, many of these things we have already dealt with when we discussed uh, research report or even research proposal. Next is you know results and uh, discussion. So, um, here you interpret your data and you tell readers what the, that data means. Uh, in research context, usually we talk of uh, descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. So, uh, descriptive statistics usually includes you know your mean, median, mode kind of scores. So, you are just you know describing things as they are. So, inferential means you interpret so what they mean. So, say you have got mean scores of two groups. So, that would be your descriptive statistics. If those you know two mean scores um, are their differences and those uh, differences are they significant, that is what your inferential statistics will tell you. Let us look at uh, an example now. So, uh, this is from a paper developing EFL learners metaphoric competence through cognitive oriented methods. So, there were two groups control group and experimental group. With one group they used uh, 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 cognitive oriented methods that was experimental group. Um, um, so, if you look at it, this is uh, there are two groups, then there were pre test and post test. So, these are you know mean scores. So, they just represent and um, standard deviation scores are given in parenthesis. So, this is an example of descriptive statistics. This is an example of inferential statistics. So, uh, they have run um, you know t test and um, details about it are given. So, these tell you whether the the, these mean scores you got uh, mean something else. So, um, uh, a detailed discussion on you know descriptive stats, inferential stats is beyond the scope of this course, but you can refer to uh, as any simple uh, statistics book and you get uh, more details. The point is you include um, these details under your uh, results and discussion section. Acknowledgements. So, we have seen that you have a very detailed you know section um, on acknowledgements in a dissertation. In a research paper, this is very short, you acknowledge only the most important people, objects, organizations, say somebody who funded your research, uh, you know, somebody who helped you in significantly revising the paper, uh, but did not directly contribute to actual writing. So, um, uh, so you have to be uh, more careful uh, when including you know names and uh, uh, institutes under acknowledgements. Uh, let us look at uh, an example here. This is from uh, teaching English metaphors using cross linguistic awareness raising activities. See how uh, the writers use acknowledgement section here. 
The work discussed here formed part of a project on metaphor in ELT conducted jointly by staff from teacher training colleges in the Sosonowicz area of Poland and from the University of Birmingham. This was one of a series of joint projects between the two institutions made possible by the British Council Prince project. So, you are acknowledging uh, you know this collaboration uh, from other institutes also uh, uh, funding agency. So, uh, your acknowledgement section is even more specific in a research paper. The last section you know is called bio note. Um, so, here you include um, some information about yourself as a, an author. Let us look at this example. This is from do not keep them in the dark teaching metaphors to English language learners written by Dong. So, this bio note is about this person, Yuren Dong is associate professor in the English education program at Queens College CUNY. Her professional interests include English teacher education and teaching English to linguistically and culturally diverse students. So, you briefly include uh, some information about your research areas or your significant contributions like books or path breaking papers among other things. So, today we have looked at a research paper and we saw that you know it can stem out of your dissertation, but it is more uh, you know uh, focused and um, it is more structured and it follows conventions even more rigorously. Thank you.